Howdy, and welcome back to the Texas Bucket List. You know, when it's summertime in Texas, there's nothing better than a big old piece of sweet watermelon. Recently, I was enjoying the refreshing flavor of my favorite fruit when I couldn't help but notice on the sticker a picture of a young Texan. So we sought out this person named Luke Brown to see what made his watermelon so good. The wide expanses of West Texas are majestic landscapes with mountains, dirt, and dust. Despite the dry climate, life has found a way to flourish in this part of the state, and the growing conditions are so good, you just never know what you'll find blooming near Balmeray. What are you doing out here in Balmeray? I guess we're proving a point that you can grow watermelons in the desert. Luke Brown is a fourth generation watermelon farmer. Everybody in Texas has their own story about a watermelon. And this is mine. Since 2010, he's made melon magic on these 800 acres right off Interstate 10, pretty much in the middle of nowhere. It's a long ways to get anything. Midland Odessa's over 100 miles, Fort Stockton's 50 miles, Pecos is 40 miles. And when you get to those two places, you still don't have a lot of options. Despite the long drive, Luke loves growing the great gourds in this parched part of the state. Because technically, watermelons were first found in Africa and the climate here is just about the same sort of circumstances. They do very well in the arid climate because of the cool nights, no humidity, low disease pressure, low pest pressure. Days like today, you get this nice breeze. It's, it's very nice to farm watermelons out here. So these are ready to get shipped out here, These huh? are ready to get shipped. These are some of our bigger seedless, red seedless. Um, probably, probably my favorite size, the 17 to 22 pounders. Oh, it's like a wee baby. <laughs> And by we, I mean a huge baby. <laughs> a huge baby. <laughs> yes, Speaking sir. of babies, no. who's that guy? <laughs> uh, yep, that was me 10 years ago. 10 years ago. So how old were you here? 12? 14. 14. Wow. So was that a significant moment in your life? or? I wasn't smiling because I had braces. <laughs> <laughs> now, when it came to marketing his massive melons, Luke needed something that made his large, juicy fruit stick out. So he made a very unique sticker. A picture's worth a thousand words. <laughs> I guess you that wasn't on your Tinder when you met your wife. <laughs> <laughs> you see that? You may think, well, is he missing? Is <laughs> I've got I've gotten everything. It definitely stands out in everyone's mind. And it's 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 easy to describe. <laughs> we need to buy this watermelon to help find the missing boy. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever sells watermelons. <laughs> You ever regret putting your picture on that label? Or is it doing exactly what you wanted it to do? It's it's doing what I wanted it to do. Yeah. If my quality drops, I'll change stickers. <laughs> <laughs> but it's not just his picture that pulls in the attention. His contact info actually creates a crazy amount of correspondence. I have an email address on the sticker. I received thousands of emails from people all over the state, all over the country, Canada, even a few from England. I don't know how they got over there. <laughs> Growing up in a family of watermelon farmers, Luke has been surrounded by this sort of lifestyle his whole life. So it was no wonder that when he found love, he was looking in the sweetest spot, the annual watermelon convention. I've been attending those watermelon conventions. I attended my first one in 2007, and I was 12, and those girls were pretty then. <laughs> now Luke didn't settle with just any good looking Texas lady. He earned a blue ribbon when he married the watermelon queen. Kind of a serendipitous match. You could say that. Did you ever expect to marry the watermelon queen? Almost halfway. <laughs> but I'm sure your wife's the most beautiful watermelon queen ever. What are you talking about? <laughs> I'm just trying to save you, buddy. No, absolutely. <laughs> so we've established Luke did a great job picking a wife, but can he pick the perfect watermelon? I'm sure a big question you get from a lot of people is how do you pick the perfect watermelon? If it's cut and put in a bin, it should be right. I slap, I don't thump. Turns out giving it a smack might help too. That hollow, kind of a good, that means you're getting a uniform vibration, reverberation back out of the melon. The interior quality is all intact. It hasn't been dropped, okay. it hasn't been bruised, and it hasn't been allowed to sit and get hot. The best part of being in a watermelon field in far west Texas you got your pick of the litter. Straight off the vine. Straight off the vine. Mm. 
That is juicy and sweet. I can never pick a watermelon like this. The perfect watermelon to me is sweet, crisp, firm texture. For Luke, growing watermelon is his way of life. A Texas tradition that means more to him than a sweet, simple snack on a summer <laughs> afternoon. This is freedom. It's something I don't take lightheartedly or for granted. I'm thankful every day that I wake up and, and have had this opportunity to be here and have been blessed with the family that I have. And all I aspire to do is when I have children of my own or grandchildren of my own, that I can instill the same values and work ethic that, that I believe I possess. The Texas Bucket List is brought to you by Spirit of Texas Bank. Texans helping Texans. Slovacek Sausage, you'll love our sausage. Experience Bryan College Station and Seaforce Natural Artesian Water by Chuck Norris.